we can hopefully know the first solution like that now. In fact, this is hopefully the easiest one to memorize. Sign of what will give me a half? Pi on 6, thank you. And you can see pi on 6 is nice and close. If you drew it well, it should be about a sixth of the way to the next intercept after 0. Now, this is a little bit trickier. Okay? So I'm actually at this point going to ask you to put your pens down and you can finish graphing in a second. I want your minds engaged with what's happening up here. Okay? Here's my first solution. How do I get my next solution going in the positive direction? I mean, I know I could actually get this one, but the next solution, don't tell me what the answer is. How do I get it geometrically? This went forward, pi on 6, right? How do I get to this one? Like, let me draw it in for you. Pi minus pi plus pi Yeah, you, hopefully you remember, back from your quadrants, even if this is what you're sort of relying on, right? You get the acute angle here. To get the obtuse angle that's sort of equivalent to that, you say pi minus, right? And then to get the two reflex angles, how do you get this one? Pi plus. Pi plus, and what about the last one? Two pi minus. Two pi minus. By the way, two pi minus, two pi minus, right? You see it, two pi minus, that's where we got from, okay? Now, have you look over here, we're looking at this second, second quadrant angle. It's pi, you can see by the symmetry, take away the same distance. Okay, now you can tell me the answer, which of course is? Five by six. six. <laughs> okay, now once I've got that pair of solutions, you can see, I, just like I did with cosine, I can get every other solution by taking those two and going forward two pi, two pi radians, right? So can you tell me what the other solutions are? What's this next one going to be? Um, I'm adding two pi, pi which, is, pi. which is 12 pi on pi six. Pi. Should be 13. Which means the next one will be 17. 17. And then let's do our last pair. This one will be 25. 25? 25? And this one will be 29, right? Because it's just one pi on six short of 30 pi on six. Okay, so again, watching carefully, right? How am I going to wrap these two things together? There are two ways, and they're both legitimate, and I want you to understand both, okay? Here's the first way. I can kind of consider that there are two overlapping sequences of solutions here, two overlapping ones. First, you've got the acute angles, right? You've got this acute angle, then you've got an acute angle plus two pi, then you've got an acute angle plus four pi, and then you'll have an acute angle plus six pi, six pi and eight. It's the same kind of thing that was happening here, right? So I could say, here's my first bunch of solutions, that x is equal to, it's a terrible brace, let's fix that, better. 2n pi, right, that's the even pi's, right, plus the little acute angle, you remember that? Pi on 2. Okay, for, you know, an integer values of n, of course, right. But then, I've got these obtuse values for x that I also want to solve, right? So what did we say this was? We said it was pi, take away pi on 6, right? And then this one was, uh, it'll be uh, 3 pi minus pi on 6, and then 5 pi minus pi on 6, right? So I'm going to write this in two ways. I'm going to say it's 2n pi plus, you see this is the obtuse angle that relates to the acute angle that I wrote at the top. Does that make sense? You've got theta and then you've got pi minus theta. But of course I can do a little bit more simplifying here, right? I could write this as, like I can take out a factor of pi. Do you see that? I can say there's 2n plus 1, lots of pi, right? Now 2n, that gives you all the even integers. 2n plus 1 will give you all the odd ones. Does that make sense? You see how I did that? Um, I thought about it from the obtuse angles point of view, and then I said, well, I can factor that out. And I've got one sequence for the even pi, and then another sequence for the odd ones. Does that make sense? So this is fine, okay? I will point out, just while I'm doing that, this 2n plus 1, all it really is doing for me is giving me odd numbers, right? 1, 3, 5, negative 1, etc. 2n plus 1 is a fine way to do that. I could just as easily, if I wanted to, have said 2n minus 1. Now this is a bit weird. We're not really accustomed to this, right? It's like, wait, in my books, usually 2n plus 1 and 2n minus 1 are different, right? But in the case of general solution, they are not 
different. Do you see why? What, what is the job of this um, this 2n pi, or the n pi before, or, or this 2n plus 1, or 2n minus 1? Its job is just to give me all the different values of pi where I should start from and, and move back and forth from. Okay? So being that its only job is to give me, in this case, give me all the even numbers. In this case, give me all the odd numbers. Okay? Both of these formulas will do them just fine for me. Right? In fact, they're both the general term of an AP, which will always give me all of the odd numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, etc. It's just a different value of n. Okay? So these are both fine. They're both legitimate. They're different answers, but they give you the same solutions. Does that make sense? So, what do we got here? Let's just pause. I've got this, and I'm going to put that line. I think that would be kind of like the nicest one, right? I need both of them, yeah? I need one for the evens and one for the odds, and then I've captured all my solutions. That's all right, but I kind of don't like the fact that I have to say um, one series of solutions, sequence I should say, one sequence of solutions, and I have to say two things to capture that one sequence. It's kind of awkward. I didn't have to do it for tan, and I didn't have to do it for cosine. So how can I avoid it for sine? And I don't know how long a mathematician was staring at this problem until um, the flash of inspiration came to them, but I bet she must be really satisfied when she finally wrote down what she's after, what you're after, what we're after, is one function that can do both of these jobs. Right? We want a function that will, for even values, go forwards. See that? Forwards, forwards, forwards. But for odd values, doesn't go forwards, it goes backwards. It goes here, backwards. Here, backwards. You see what's happening? Okay. So if you've got, <laughs> you're probably running out, but if you've got one more color, right, I want you to show you've got zero pi plus, then you've got one pi minus, Z, sorry, two pi plus, three pi minus, four pi plus, five pi minus. If only there were some function that based on the number you put it in, if it's even, it goes that way, and if it's odd, it goes that way. And here's what they worked out. They said, look, you go every multiple of pi, you want every single one, so I'm going to go n pi, not 2n pi. What I want to add is something which goes back and forth, switches back and forth, and back. we call this the switching part of the expression. This is what they came up with. Think about this guy for a second, and I need to finish it off. I need a plan six on the Think about negative one to the power of n. It's brilliant, right? You put in any even value. What will happen if you put an even value into n? What happens to the negatives? They always cancel each other, right? You can put zero, two, four, six, eight in there, and you'll always have an even number of negative signs that always cancel each other out, okay? But if you put in an odd number like one or three or five, you'll always have a negative left over. It's ingenious, right? So what we've got here is a single line that does the job of both these lines. Okay? So you can see it's kind of well, it's much more elegant. If you can wrap your head around this weird thing, and the fact that it's a bit confusing because tan has a period of pi, that's why your the formula has n pi in it. Cosine has a, a period of 2 pi, so that's why it's got a 2 n pi in it. But be careful, we're trying to do something different with sine take care of this backwards and forwards thing, right? So even though sine has a period of 2 pi, we've crafted a formula to take these two bits and put them into 1. Does that make sense? So lastly, to finish it out, I can say, generally, if you are solving sine x equals any constant you like, then for any domain, x is going to equal to n pi plus negative 1 to the n times what again? Sine inverse, very good. That, whatever angle, right? Whatever base angle will do it for you. Sine inverse, okay. 